This is section 2.6, which is graphs of rational functions. We're going to talk about rational functions, transformations of the reciprocal function, limits and asymptotes, analyzing graphs of rational functions, transformations of rational functions, and explore relative humidity. Okay, so a rational function is basically if you have two polynomials and you're dividing them, so you have a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator, you end up with a rational function. So our first example is finding the domain of the rational function. So we're going to find the domain of f and use limits to describe its behavior at values of x that's not in its domain. So when we're when we're finding when we're finding all of these things of a rational function, I kind of there's a list that we need to go through. So the first thing we're going to find is our x intercept. So our x-intercept is going to be what makes the numerator equal 0. And you can see we have 2 in the numerator, which means there's no place for me to plug in a value. So that means that we don't have a x-intercept. My y-intercept is what I get when I plug in 0 for all the x's. So if I plug in 0 right here, that would be 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay, and then my vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator equal 0, so that would be negative 2. And my horizontal asymptote is biggest power of x, so we have 0 x's on the top, and we have 1 x on the bottom, so that means that my horizontal asymptote is at 0. Okay, so if we sketch a picture of this, I'm going to use a different color for my asymptotes here. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 and horizontal asymptote at 0. Okay, so my y-intercept is at 1 and no x-intercept. So that's kind of, that's all the information I have. Um, you can always pick more points to plug in to figure out what your graph's going to look like. But if I sketch it in here, it's going to look like that. Okay, so my domain is basically, it can be any x value except for negative 2. So we would say our domain is negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to infinity. Okay, so now it says to use end behavior using limits. So end behavior... Oh, it says to describe limits to describe its behavior. So if we say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x, um, that is going to be equal to 0 because as you go to the left, your graph is approaching 0. And the limit as x goes to positive infinity of f of x is also going to be zero, because you can see in this end, it's approaching zero from that end as well. So, and then the other piece we can talk about is what's happening as it approaches the value of negative two. So the limit as x approaches two, negative two from the left, so this would be left of f of x, is so as we approach negative 2 from the left you can see your graph is decreasing it's going down so we would say negative infinity <laughs> run out of space and then the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of f of x so as we go towards negative 2 from the right it's approaching positive infinity okay so this is the reciprocal function. This is our parent function for rational functions. And we can see that our domain is all real numbers except for zero. Our range is all real numbers except for zero. Um, we have a discontinuity at zero because of our asymptote there. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero and from zero to infinity. And symmetric with respect to the origin. It's 
unbounded, no local extrema. We have a horizontal asymptote at zero and a vertical asymptote at zero. And we can see our end behavior is approaching zero. So again, that's as we go to the left and as we go to the right, our graph is approaching zero. Okay, so the next one is transforming the reciprocal function. So we're gonna describe how the graph of the given function can be obtained by transforming the graph of the reciprocal function. We're gonna identify the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and use limits to describe the corresponding behavior. So if we look at this, so our parent function that we're talking about here is f of x equals one over x. So if we look at a, that negative out front is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. And the two is going to be a vertical stretch by two. Okay, so those are the changes that have been made. Those are the transformations that we've been that have been made to A. So now if we look at B, we still have the reflection over the x-axis and we still have the vertical stretch by a factor of two, but then we added one more in here. So the x plus three in the denominator means we're going to shift, shift left three. Okay, and then our final one here what we want to do first is we actually want to do a division problem. So we want to take the 2x plus 4 and divide it by x plus 3. So that's going to be x goes into 2x two times, 2x plus 6, subtract, and we get negative 2. So we can rewrite this as 2 minus 2 over x plus 3. Now by rewriting it that way, we can see we still have a shift left, we still have a reflection over the x-axis, we still have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and then this 2 out here is going to be a shift up 2. So those are transformations. Okay, so then we're going to talk about how do we find all these different things. So we kind of looked at, we touched on that in the first example. Um, so end behavior asymptote, that is our horizontal asymptote. So you have here, so easier way to say this. So if we have a, to, my dog's growling, a times x to the n over b times x to the m. So if n is less than m, then the m behavior is going to result in y equals zero as your horizontal asymptote. If n is equal to m, then the m behavior is just going to be whatever a over b is. And if n is greater than m, then there's going to be no horizontal asymptote. Okay? Vertical asymptotes are what make the denominator equal zero. So whatever makes the denominator equal zero would be your vertical asymptote. My x-intercepts we talked about are what make the numerator equal zero. And the y-intercept is you're going to plug in zero for x. Okay. So we're going to find the asymptote of the rational function. So we're going to start out with and intercepts. So x-intercepts here, what make the numerator equal zero? That would be three and negative three. Our y-intercept would be plugging in zero for x. So if we plug in zero for all of our x's, that's going to be two times three times negative three in the numerator and one times five in the denominator. So I would get negative 18 fifths, or you could write that as negative 3.6. Okay, my vertical asymptote. So that's what makes the denominator equal zero. Oops. 
So that would be x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 5. My horizontal asymptote is biggest power of x. So we have, if we were to multiply this out, we would have 2x squared on the top and we would have x squared in the denominator. So this would be 2x squared over 1x squared equals 2. So our horizontal asymptote would be at 2. Okay, our last example is graphing a rational function. So we're going to practice finding all those things and then putting that on the graph. So our x-intercept is what makes the numerator equal 0, so that would be positive 1. Our y-intercept, what happens when we plug in 0 for all the x's, and we get 1 sixth. My vertical asymptote would be both 2 and negative 3. And my horizontal asymptote, so biggest power of x, I have x squared in the denominator, I have just an x in the numerator, so it would be 0x squared over x squared, which would be 0. Okay, so now I'm going to put all of that on my graph here. So we have an x, oh, that's not. So we have vertical asymptote at 2 and at negative 3, and horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, now I can plot the points that I know. So I know I have an x-intercept at 1, and I have a y-intercept at 1, 6. It's kind of hard to plot that point. Okay. And then that's all I have. So if we don't have a lot of points, we might need to make a little table to determine some of our points. So I'm going to plug in negative 5, and I get negative point 429. Oops, can't get the 9 in there. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 2 and I get 0.75. So that shows me negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to have a dot right there. It's hard to graph on this. And then negative 2, 0.75, kind of right in there. OK, and then I'm going to plug in positive 3. And I get 0.3, kind of right about there. And then I'm going to plug in 6, and I get 0.14. Okay, so this graph is going to look kind of like this. You could graph this on Desmos, too, so that you could see a more accurate picture, but it's hard to graph on this, but um, it gives you an idea. So the thing with the horizontal asymptote, sometimes it confuses people if it crosses the asymptote, because we use the asymptote as kind of a guide that our graph's approaching, but not necessarily crossing. But with horizontal asymptotes, it's a description of your end behavior. So you can see that your graph is approaching zero from the left and the right as it gets, as your x's get really big or x's get really small. So in the, in the small values of x, it could cross the um, horizontal asymptote. It's not going to ever be at the vertical asymptote because that would make the denominator equal zero and we can't divide by zero. Okay, so that is rational functions. Let me know if you have any questions.